Well, hello and welcome back to our Advent series uh, and welcome to the conclusion of our Advent series. We have we've looked at prophecy and Bethlehem and shepherds and angels and now of course we come to the, the culmination of the Advent season, which is Christ. Okay, the, the whole thing is about Christ. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we've made that clear thus far. Uh, the angels are great. The shepherds are great. The wise men are cool. Uh, Bethlehem is great. But it's all about Jesus Christ, right? That's what the Christmas season is all about. And at this point, I'm sure you are, uh, you are up to here, right, with the Christmas season because it, Christmas can be a busy time. It, it really can. You know, there's so many... There's so many questions, if you think about it, there are so many questions that we have to answer for Christmas. There's a lot of planning involved, right? Um, You know, you have to to start with, when do we put up the Christmas tree? Right? That's always a controversial one. Do you put it up before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving? Uh, You know, where are you going to put it? Um, What Christmas parties are you going to go to? Because, you know, there's always so many options. There's work Christmas parties and church Christmas parties and family Christmas parties. And, uh, again, you have to decide which ones am I going to go to because sometimes, you know, you just can't go to everything. And, you know, are you going to visit family out of town at Christmas? Or are you going to have family come and stay at your house? And if they come and stay at your house, where are they all going to stay? And if they do come and stay at your house, what if they stay too long and you can't get rid of them? Right? There's just so many questions you have to ask around the Christmas season. And, you know, we haven't even gotten into the present issue, right? The gift question. Who are you going to buy gifts for every year? How long is your Christmas list? And what are you going to get everybody? Right? What do you get your kids and your in-laws and your parents and what about those cousins that you have that you don't really like but you know you're going to see them at Christmas do you get them something do you not get them something you know (laughs) there's just a lot of questions and if we're not careful answering all of these questions takes us away from the meaning of Christmas it takes us away from what Christmas is really all about and so there's really only one question that we need to answer at Christmas and that's why That's the most important question. The why of Christmas is the most important question. Why did Jesus have to come? Why did Jesus have to be born? Right, so we know that Christmas is the celebration of the birthday of Jesus Christ. It is the celebration of when Jesus was born. Now, we know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. Sometimes, you know, know, people get a kick out of telling you, you know, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. We know that, okay? We've known that for a long time, like forever, okay? (laughs) December 25th is not Jesus' actual birthday. It is the day, however, that we celebrate the birth of Christ, the incarnation. It's that moment when we celebrate God leaving heaven and taking on flesh. But why did he do that? Why was that necessary? You see, if we really want to celebrate Christmas, if we really want to celebrate the Christ of Christmas, we have to understand the why. We have to answer the why question. Why did Jesus come? One of the things I've been telling my church throughout this Christmas season is that the cradle without the cross is worthless. I've been saying that over and over this year. The cradle without the cross is worthless. You see, we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, the moment when Jesus came down and was placed in that manger, that cradle, uh, by his mother Mary and his, his earthly father Joseph. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with celebrating that. We should celebrate that. But when we celebrate that, we need to understand why. You see, the fact of the matter is Jesus was born to die. That was his purpose. That's the reason he came. Jesus came to die. And we need to understand why he died and why that's so important if we're going to really understand Christmas and be able to celebrate Christmas. And so what I want to do with you today is I actually want to jump forward. We've been looking at the the Christmas story uh, so far in our Advent series. We looked at prophecy of the Messiah. We looked at, uh, again, the Bethlehem where Jesus was born. We've looked at the shepherds uh, who came to the uh, to the the manger and and found baby Jesus there. We talked about the, the angels who proclaimed the message. But I actually want to fast forward now. I want to fast forward in, in, in the Gospel of Luke all the way to the end. So if you have your Bibles, grab them. If you don't, pause this video, go get a Bible. I want you to have a Bible with you. If you fast forward all the way to the end of the Luke, in, in, excuse me, to the end of Luke, 
we get to the why of Christmas. Why was Jesus born? And we find that in Luke chapter 23 and Luke chapter 24. And again, I'm not going to take the time to read all of this. I encourage you to do that. You know, Again, pause this video and read Luke chapter 23 and Luke chapter 24. This is the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I just want to read some of this to you. I want to start in verse 44 of Luke 23. Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 44, here's what we read. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle... When they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action. And he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid it in a tomb, cut in stone, where no one had ever been laid. It was a day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb, excuse me, followed and saw the tomb, and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. In these verses, we read of the death of Jesus Christ, the final moment in the life of Christ. And again, this is why he came. Jesus was born to die. The cradle without, without the cross is worthless. If all we have is the birth of Jesus, that's not reason to celebrate. You see, if Jesus Christ was born and that was it, if he didn't die on the cross for your sins, then you're still dead in your sins. There is no forgiveness. Because you see, the Bible tells us that we're all sinners, and Romans chapter 6, verse 23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death. And so because we're sinners, we're going to die. And not just die physically, but we're, we're, we're already dead spiritually. And we're going to suffer punishment for all of eternity because of our sins. That's what we deserve. And if Jesus was just born and that was it, well then nothing's changed. I'm still a sinner. I'm still lost in my sins. So you see, Jesus was born to die. The reason he came as a baby was to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And that's what we read about in Luke chapter 23. Verse 46 says that he breathed his last. Jesus died. That is the moment that Jesus died. Luke then goes in to the next few verses, verses 50 through 56, talking about the burial of Jesus. Now why was this important? Why does he go to so much detail telling us about the death of Jesus and, and the burial of Jesus? Well, Luke wanted you to know and wants us to know Jesus died. He physically died. That's why he came. You see, there is no hope for us without the death of Christ. There is no hope whatsoever without the death of Christ because it is on the cross that the Bible says God took all the sin of the world. So God took all of your sin. He took all of my sin. He placed it on Jesus Christ who was sinless, who was perfect. But he took all of our sin, placed it on Jesus, and then the Bible says that he punished Jesus in our place. You see, sin angers God because God is good and God is righteous and God is holy, and sin angers a holy and righteous God. Some people have a problem with that. It's ridiculous, to be honest with you, if you have a problem with that because let's just be honest, evil angers us because we're creating the image of God, right? So it makes sense. But when you see someone do something horrible, when you hear of someone doing something horrible, you're naturally angered. That's a good thing. Evil should anger you. And evil and sin angers God. And so the Bible tells us that what Jesus did was he came and lived a perfect sinless life. But then on the cross, God took all of our sin, placed it on Jesus, and then God poured out his wrath on Jesus. So he punished Jesus for what you did. And he punished Jesus for what I did. And that's what's so amazing about Jesus dying on the cross is that he paid the penalty of our sin. He satisfied the wrath of God that I deserve and that you deserve. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is something to celebrate because Jesus grew up to live a sinless life and die on the cross for your sins. If he didn't do those things, there's no reason to celebrate Christmas. In a manger, 
whoopity do. <laughs> Babies are born all the time, right? There is nothing special about a cute baby born in a manger. Cute babies are born all the time. Let's be honest. Cute babies are born all the time. Ugly babies are born all the time, right? They're not all cute, right? Some of them are kind of sketchy. But listen, babies are born all the time. That's not special. That's nothing to celebrate. That's no reason for us to have the Christmas season where we celebrate all month long. Just a baby being born. But if that baby was born and then grew up to live a perfect, sinless life, Something only this baby could do because this child was also God. Jesus was fully divine and fully human. And so he could live as a human, but not sin. And then because he's human, he could go to the cross and die for your sins. That's what makes Christmas so great. That's why we celebrate Christmas, because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. But that's not the only reason we celebrate Christmas. Because just like there's nothing special about a baby being born... There's really nothing special about someone dying on the cross. People died on the cross all the time. You know, Romans were actually very good at crucifying people. That was their um, death penalty of choice, if you will. They were very good at it. They crucified thousands upon thousands upon tens of thousands of people. Okay, Jesus was not the only one crucified. They crucified lots of people. So, again, that alone is not reason to celebrate. Okay, because if Jesus died on the cross and that's the end, well, that's really not anything to celebrate because people die all the time. You see, if Jesus died on the cross and that was the end, he would just be another human being dying, another human being who died. Nothing special. But if we keep reading in Luke, we find out what's so special, and we find out again why we celebrate Christmas. Let's keep reading. Luke 24, starting in verse 1. It says, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went, speaking of these women, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they had went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all to the rest. Now as Mary Magdalene and Joanna the, uh, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them like an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Now, I'm going to stop there, but if you keep reading in Luke chapter 24, Jesus appears to two men on the road to Emmaus. Later, he appears to his disciples, and it is clear that Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen from the dead. And again, this is why we celebrate Christmas, because Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and he rose from the dead. Now, why is the resurrection so important? Let me tell you a few things that make the resurrection so important. Number one, Jesus' resurrection proved that his sacrifice was accepted by the Father. Remember we said the reason Jesus died was to satisfy the wrath of God? Well, how do we know Jesus, uh, God's wrath was satisfied? How do we know God really accepted that sacrifice? You see, if Jesus just died and that was the end, we'd have no reason to think that his sacrifice was acceptable to the Father because, again, people die all the time because we're sinners, right? Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. So people die all the time because they're sinners. So if there was no resurrection, it would then make sense that Jesus just died for his own sins and that was the end. But with the resurrection, Jesus proves that his sacrifice was accepted by the Father. And so we can know that our sins can be forgiven. Why? Because in the resurrection of Jesus, we know that God accepted that sacrifice. And if you will put your faith in Jesus, if you will repent of your sins and follow Jesus, you can have that forgiveness that the resurrection promises. Second thing the resurrection does, Jesus' resurrection proved he was sinless. Again, for the wages of sin is death, right? We die because we're sinners. Okay, we, we are born spiritually dead because we live in a fallen, sinful world. And the moment we can choose right from wrong, we choose wrong. So we make ourselves guilty when we sin. And the, the consequence for that is not only physical death, but permanent spiritual death in hell for eternity. 
But in Jesus' resurrection, he proved that he was sinless. Because again, if he would have died and stayed dead, you would have thought, well, that's nothing new. People die and stay dead all the time. That's what we expect, right? You know, contrary to, to Hollywood, there are no ghosts. There are no such thing as ghosts. There are no vampires. There are no zombies. There are no undead. People die and they stay dead, okay? However, Jesus coming back from the dead demonstrates that he that death couldn't hold him because he was sinless, because he was perfect. So we read this in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. The Bible says, For we do not have a high priest, speaking of Jesus, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. The Bible tells us that Jesus was without sin, and therefore death could not hold him. The third thing we learn about the res- from the resurrection is the resurrect- in Jesus' resurrection, it proved that Jesus was divine. Again, it proved that Jesus wasn't just human, he was God. And that's why he could come and live a perfect life. That's why he could die on the cross for our sins. Jesus' is divinity. I say this all the time. You see, one of the benefits of being God is you can't kill God. And so Jesus came, he was fully man, he was fully God, And so because he was fully man, he was able to die for our sins. But because he was fully God, he couldn't stay dead. Death can't hold God. Death has no power over God. God created everything. Okay? Um, The Bible says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 24. Speaking of Jesus, it says, God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Luke says in Acts that it was not possible for death to to hold Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is divine. He is the perfect Son of God. He is the eternal Son of God. Something actually kind of off topic here, but important to know at Christmas, when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, Jesus did not come into existence at Christmas. Jesus is the eternal Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Son, has always existed. He has existed from eternity past. He will exist into eternity future. Okay, God exists in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's always been the case. So Jesus did not come into existence at Christmas. He left heaven and came to earth at Christmas. It's the incarnation. The incarnation just means in the flesh. It's when God put on flesh and became a human being. And so again, God was fully divine and fully human. He lived a perfect, sinless life because he was divine, yet he died because he... He was able to die because he was human, but death couldn't hold him. And so his resurrection demonstrates his divinity. He is God. The last thing that the resurrection proves is this. Jesus' resurrection proved there is life after death. Death is not the end. This is, again, why do we celebrate Christmas? This is why we celebrate Christmas. This is why it's so exciting. Because in the person of Jesus, we learn that death is not the end. I love what we read here in Luke chapter 24, verses 5 through 7. Uh, It says this, And as they were frightened, speaking of the women, as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. I love the words in verse 5 where the angel says, Why do you seek the living among the dead? It's almost as if the angels are kind of shocked uh, that these ladies are looking for Jesus in the tomb. Right? It's kind of like, hey, why are you here at the graveyard looking for a dead person? Right? The graveyard's for the dead people. Jesus isn't dead. Jesus is alive. He told you he was going to come back from the dead. And that's exactly what he did. And so Jesus keeps his promise and he rises on the third day. And so he proves that, listen, death is not the end. That's one of the reasons or one of the things that we celebrate at Christmas. You see, Jesus demonstrates that death is not the end. And what was true for Jesus is also true for you, and it's true for me, and it's true for all your loved ones. Death is not the end. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 through 23, it says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by one man came death, speaking of Adam, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead, speaking of Jesus. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ. As Christians, we celebrate Christmas because Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his resurrection, 
reminds us that there is life after death. Death is not the end. But listen carefully to me today. Everyone will experience the resurrection. Death is not the end for anyone, Christians and non-Christians. Everyone will be resurrected. Everyone will come back to life. But after they come back to life, we'll experience what Revelation calls the great white throne judgment. And those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ will be rewarded in eternity with him. Those who have not put their faith in Jesus Christ will be cast away from the presence of the Lord and spend eternity in hell. The Bible is very clear about that. I know there's a lot of people today that don't like that. It's not very politically correct. People have a tendency to say, eh, if I don't like something, I'm just not going to believe it because that's the easier thing. The problem is if you believe the Bible, you have to believe in hell. And the Bible is very clear. We will all experience the resurrection. Some will be resurrected to new life in Christ. Some will be resurrected to spend eternity in hell. And it's completely dependent on your decision regarding Jesus Christ. Will you put your faith in Jesus? You see, a lot of people celebrate Christmas. But if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, you may be celebrating a holiday, but you're not celebrating Christmas. Because we celebrate Christmas when we recognize that that baby born in a manger was the perfect son of God. That he grew up to live a perfect sinless life. That he died a death on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And that he rose on the third day. And when I choose to put my faith in him, I can be forgiven of my sins and I can have eternal life with him. That's something to celebrate and that's why we celebrate at Christmas. So again, I hope you're celebrating Christmas. hope you're enjoying your Christmas season. But as we come to the final candle in the Advent candle, the Christ candle, I want to remind you that the celebration of Christmas is only a celebration if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you have eternal life in him. If you've never done that, you can do so today. There's no magic prayer. There's no magic words. It's as simple as this. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God? Do you believe He came to this earth, lived a perfect sinless life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose from the third day, on the third day? If you believe that, then all you have to do is ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins and give your life to Him. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for Christmas, thanking you for your son Jesus. God, what a, what, a, what a celebration. Lord, we celebrate that you gave your son for us, that we can have eternal life, but it only comes through faith. Lord, if there's anyone watching this right now that's never put their faith in you, I pray they do it right now. I pray that they confess with their mouth, I believe, I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived a perfect life. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And I pray that they repent. I repent of my sin. Lord, please forgive me of my sin. I want to be your follower. I want to be your disciple. I choose today to follow you. And if they've done that today, Lord God, I pray that you give them the assurance of their salvation, the peace and joy that only come from you. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you gave your life to Christ, if you believe those things, the Bible says that you are guaranteed eternity in heaven. But this is just the beginning of your journey. Because now it's time to start your relationship with Christ. Now it's time to learn about Christ. If you don't have a local church, you need to find a Bible-believing local church and get involved so that you can study the Bible, so that you can meet other believers, so that you can grow to know the Lord. If you're not part of a local congregation right now, you need to be in one. Not only because the Bible tells us to, but because it's what's best for you. Hope you have a great rest of your Christmas and a very happy new year. Thank you.